Welcome back once again, CISSP wannabes. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each and every time I come at you, I bring you two questions to help you prep for this dreaded CISSP exam. So here we go. Question number one today is, which of the following is not something that would be considered when planning an occupant emergency plan or a emergency action plan? Click pause. Look at those answer choices over. When you're ready, click play. First choice says that you would not consider evacuation plans for special case groups like um, uh, the, somebody who's disabled or children or elderly people or something like that. Um, and no, that is not true. You would absolutely have that be part of something that is included in an occupant uh, emergency plan. Second choice is that she says you would not consider defining locations for a command center uh, in the event of an emergency, and that is also not true. Your occupant emergency plan is definitely going to go in and include a description of that. You either might have a, an actual dedicated place where this is going to happen, and it's already pre-built some sort of a command center, or it might even be something as simple as going in and defining that a centralized conference room is going to be the command center or something like that. But uh, that is definitely something that will be in an OEP to go in and do that. Third answer choice says that you would not include contingency plans to define alternate mechanisms of communication. Um, no, that should be in an occupant emergency plan. Um, you have a primary way that you intend to go in and announce that the plan has been activated, but what if for some reason that was not available? What if you were going to do it by email or you're going to do it by phone or something like that and suddenly those things aren't available to you? You need to have a backup mechanism as a way for people to go in and, or for you to be able to go in and communicate uh, with the people or, or whoever the powers that be are who are involved in this. So that's definitely something that should be in your OEP. That leaves us with the last choice that must be the correct choice and that one says that an OEP is going to include uh, plans to allow for continued operations of the primary function of what the, what's going on at the facility, and no, that would actually fall in the purview of a continuity of operations plan, not an emergency, occupant emergency plan. And we don't want to duplicate work, so there's, there's no reason for that stuff to be defined or detailed in your OEP since it's already going to be done by your continuity of operations planning process. So that is the correct answer choice here. All right, let's move on to question number two. Question number two today is, which of these items that I'm about to show you is the responsibility of an information owner? All right, so there are your answer choices. Look them over, click pause if you need to, click play when you are ready, and we will walk through. First answer choice says that an information owner is gonna perform regular nightly backups of data. No, an information owner is going to make sure that those things are done, but the information owner is not going to do them. So that will typically be a job that falls to whoever the custodian of the information is to go in and, and do that. Answer choice number two says that the information owner is going to be responsible for the information classification. That is absolutely correct. So whoever the information owner is, either a senior person within the organization or the manager in the line of business, they're the one that goes in and defines um, what the classification level is of their information of, to which they are the owner. That's one of their jobs. Let's look the other ones over. Um, how about the information owner being responsible for developing an information classification policy? No, nope. that role, that job's typically going to fall to somebody in like an ISSO type role. Um, so not the information owner's job to do that. They comply with the policy of whatever the information classification scheme is by making sure that they assign the appropriate labels to the information based upon what's defined in the policy. Then the last choice says that the information owner would be responsible for labeling uh, the information um, with its appropriate classification level. Now, that's not the information owner's job, again, either. That, that job's really going to fall more to, again, to the custodian to go in and do that, really at the direction of an ISSO, but um, not an actual thing that the information owner does. So the only thing on this list that really complies with what does an information owner do is they define what the, what the classification is. The rest of them belong to some other role. Okay, we did it. Two more questions down. Bye.